how do you monitor someone, Colleen, once you start them on therapy? Um, so it's basically going to be monitoring their viral load. Sure. And if we're starting one of these, you know, highly potent regimens, our viral load is going to drop very quickly in a matter of weeks. Right. That, that's um, so critical, right? Mm -hmm. A matter of weeks. I mean, yeah. That, yeah, so, so. It used to be months, right, right where right. you would just watch people and wait for their viral loads to come down. And now you can check them at two weeks, four weeks, and many, many people will be undetectable already, depending on how high they start with their viral right. load. Right. And in fact, but, if you don't see that, that's worrisome. Something's happened, right? Yeah, that's worrisome. Either they didn't go to the drugstore and pick it up, which sometimes happens. I've certainly had that happen. <laughs> um, they're, they're not taking it as they should. Even like Eric mentioned with PrEP, sometimes people believe they're taking it like they should, but, but they're actually not. And then, and this has happened to me, uh, sometimes uh, a drug interaction is either unanticipated or, or not, not actually queried about. And that, that can happen, but but so that that you know by two weeks you should see you know ten to a hundred fold drop, right? So um, and then and then what are your expectations in terms of CD4? What, what how does that usually go? And, you know CD4 is, is traditionally much longer um, in responding, and and I you know tell my patients on the months to years time frame for your CD4 count depending on where you're starting. Mm -hmm. um, and so we focus a lot less on CD4 count and really on those people that are newly starting focus a lot on the viral load and getting that viral load undetectable because that's where their health is going to improve, um, regardless of what their CD4 count is. Are there people that you're particularly worried about who start? Like you mentioned, the people with advanced disease, what they they can. Yeah, you know, the the older you are, the lower your CD4 count when you start. Right. Uh, so the the sicker in terms of HIV disease you are, the uh, the smaller the increase in CD4 count might be, and for. for People who start with really low CD4 counts, less than 50, um, some reasonable proportion of them are never going to get above 200. And they may continue to need prophylaxis to prevent uh, opportunistic infections. Uh, and we don't fully understand why that is, uh, that they don't uh, reconstitute their T cell counts the way we'd, we'd like them to. Uh, but they, they are uh, still potentially uh, at risk. So that's another reason why it's so important to yeah. be doing active screening and getting people on treatment as soon as possible. Yeah. But even with a low C4 count, that's you know their their health is infinitely improved Absolutely. with a suppressed viral load. Yeah. And so you know I take care of a lot of people with very low C4 yeah. counts, and so that's what we focus on. Right. <laughs> yeah, I think the biggest change in the guidelines over the last several years is actually is that uh, less is more. Yeah, uh, and that for in that sub testing. Yeah, for that right. subset right. of people who are really doing well, mm -hmm. who have CD4s of over 500, who maintain viral suppression, the guidelines say follow-up CD4 testing is optional yeah. ever yeah. Right. because it, kind of never, it will never change what you're going to do in that setting. And, and they hedge a little bit in the 300 to 500 group and say, maybe in this group you may be able to test once a year mm -hmm. if they're maintaining viral suppression because the likelihood they're going to drop below 200 and need prophylaxis in that setting is so low. So we're doing less and less CD4s because they're less meaningful once somebody has a high count and doesn't need prophylaxis as long as their virus is suppressed. And then we're also doing less and less viral load testing. You know, we used to do it every, you know, every month, every three months, every four months, because we were desperately waiting for people to fail. Mm -hmm. And we know that people who do well will continue to do well unless something changes. And you know, the guidelines are now starting to say, and that patient who's been virologically suppressed for a couple of years, maybe every six months is plenty. And you could argue maybe even less than that. For we right, have patients who don't show right, up, yeah. right? They miss all their appointments. They come once a year. They're, they're always undetected. They're always undetected. Right. Yeah. I, I think it really depends a lot on the patient and on the relationship with the patient. Because I think that even though from a medical perspective, you certainly could be monitoring virus loads as infrequently as once a year. Uh, it, there are some patients, I think, who really need that contact with their HIV their provider, provider sure. and for whom seeing on a quarterly basis that their virus load is still suppressed is such a positive reinforcement course, sure. Sure. for continued sure. adherence. So I think we, you have to judge you know, who the patient is and, and what's going to work best for them. I yeah, agree. and I, I haven't yet encountered a patient that wants to completely give, in up, give up testing their CD4 cell yeah. count. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I get it's in the guidelines. I haven't quite gotten to the person that says, okay, never test it again. It's and fine. you know it's appropriate. I mean, it, right, sure. none of those people do we do anything about. Right. We do no, no, the Other guidelines are right. Other than tell them that not, that drop from 600 to 500 is not relevant. Yeah.